Morris, Mackie and Chad on Score North and scorenorth.com. Lucky you guys. Double dose of Mackie and Judd today. Declan, our executive producer, on this Monday. We figured let's let's do all of our Viking stuff. Let's get statements. Let's talk to our friend Randy in Cottage Grove. And then let's digest the Timberwolves oh. ownership press conference separately in sort of an emergency episode here. Um, we just got done listening to and watching 30 minutes of Glenn Taylor, Mark Laurie, and Alex Rodriguez addressing the media, addressing the team, the, the whole team, because the whole team's there for media day. So the whole team was there also listening to uh, ownership. And it's kind of sounded like based on the applause afterwards that like everyone in the organization was also probably there for the meeting today. Um Let's just go around the room here. Main takeaways from the Alex Rod- Judd's already shaking his head. <laughs> Awful. Oh man! All right, uh, go ahead, Judd. Your first takeaway. What'd you learn? Um, <laughs> somebody needs to tell Glenn Taylor you can't have Dude, the mic. Just just be done with Glenn Taylor. Like you can't have. Why the microphone. are we still doing this with Glenn um, Taylor, Mike? I mean, first of all, first of all, to throw it to him to start with. And for him to tell people who are paid to ask questions. Now, it's your decision if you say yes or no. But who are paid to ask questions. This is their living. Here are two things that we're not talking about, don't ask us about. Which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, which yeah. was which was the dismissal of Gerson Rosas last week and another employee. And also Ben Simmons. Which, by the way, you want to be asked about. Not because you're going to go into Ben Simmons, but it's a great diversion and people are excited about that. So like whatever you can say, which is, you know, we're always looking to make splash moves, right? So to attempt to shut reporters down on this. Yeah. On a topic that one is not about Gerson, which is good for you. And two, you know, if you had asked Phil, if you had been there and said, uh, question for Mark Laurie. Mark, I'd like to a- ask you, I know you can't talk about Ben Simmons, but what do you think about a splash move like that? And he's like, yeah, you know, we're going to do a lot of really good things and blah, blah, blah. And instead, Glenn, nobody tells Glenn, don't phrase it like this. Don't tell people, don't start the press conference by acting like you are the 80-year-old school teacher who's going to take out the ruler and slap a guy like Johnny Krasinski in the behind if he dare dares to ask about a major trade that, by the way, you are trying to make. So my main takeaway is that was a... Okay, just I'm going to calm down for a second. I'm I'm trying to mark my heart rate right now. Okay, but I do want to I do want to sort of parse this apart just a little bit. Mark Laurie to me, I think, and by the way, might move the team. But that being said, I think he's a very smart guy. I like where he's coming from, and I think that him being in charge much more so than a Rod, who I don't trust at all, <laughs> is is sort of exciting because I think he's going to bring he's going he's definitely going to bring a fresh voice. He's a very smart guy, had ton of success. But Glenn Taylor being up there and fidgeting around and avoiding answering questions and and acting like he has a successful franchise yeah. um, made the entire thing a gong show. And I, I'll say this. To me, it ruined what should have been the excitement of here are two people that are eventually going to own the Minnesota Timberwolves. My main, main takeaway is that Mark Laurie should be handling everything going forward, whether there's a risk of him eventually moving the team or whether there's a risk of him eventually being a bad owner himself. Um, We know what the worst looks like. It's what we've all lived for the last 17 years in Glenn Taylor. I came away impressed enough from Mark Laurie, right? Like he's, yeah, this is a, is a 30 minute PR front, but to what you just said about Glenn Taylor, let's go back to the beginning of that press conference for a second. He opens the press conference by saying two things. One, in his bumbling, aw shucks, Minnesota accent way, he's the worst representation. Like People watch him and think, oh, man, that's Minnesota right there. Just Fargo. Call, you know, right? Fargo was like, right. And he tells the assembled media not to ask about the two most important stories circulating about the Timberwolves right now. One bad, one good. Gerson Rosas, Ben Simmons. Buddy, you have run the worst professional sports organization in the last 15 years. I mean, there's some rivals. The Browns have been bad until recently. The Clippers were an embarrassment until Steve Ballmer. And so 
There's a debate, but you are one of the worst professional sports owners in the last 25 years of North American sports. And your franchise is working on, counting interims, its ninth head of basketball operations in 13 years. You don't get to tell the media what they can and can't ask. Mm -hmm. You can sit there and you can answer however you want, but you don't get to stand up there and say, here's what we're going to be able to ask and here's not. Uh Uh-uh, buddy. I'm sorry. You don't get the right sit down, answer the questions you're asked, and to your point, strategically, you want to be asked about Ben Simmons because you can then deflect and say, well, we can't talk about Ben Simmons, but we are here to take shots. We want great players. We're going to make trades. Like, you can spin it into a positive. But he's too obtuse, oblivious, and I don't want to go any further than that. But I have other words I would use to describe him that that I I will stop short of. How he doesn't see ever the vision and the 30,000 foot of anything. And then for him to go on unprompted and, and just like in his ramblings to start the press conference and talk about how bad the economy is just crap right now crap. or whatever. He make a slow transition with this ownership change because I don't want to see the franchise. You know, franchises can fall on hard times. I've seen it happen. Um, What would you call this? Right. What would you call the last 17 years? Yes. You're bottom feeding in revenue. You're bottom feeding in valuation. You're certainly yes. bottom feeding in the standings and public perception. You're living and empowering and enabling rock bottom, buddy. Like just he shouldn't have even been up there, quite frankly. Like other no. than other than like, all right, uh, John Krasinski is going to ask you three questions about Ben Simmons and Gerson <laughs> Rosas, and then once that's over, uh, Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez are going to talk about the future of the franchise. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, now my blood pressure is all <laughs> ramped up again. But, but dude, like, go the freak away, please. Here's my here's my question: Where is his personal PR person? To say, Glenn, well. you can fire me, but if you do this, I'm gone. Like, this is, you can't be up here. And and you can't tell, I mean, Marty turned <laughs> it over to him to tell people what they I'm couldn't sorry. what they couldn't say. Dude, it's so bad. All of Marty, it, but I mean, she said, so why bad. didn't somebody, why didn't Marty say, Glenn, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. The only thing he can't say about Gerson oh, God. is what the settlement's going to be because I'm sure he, I'm sure the Timberwolves are going to be sued by Gerson. So that's fine. I, Dude, okay, yeah. we can't talk about that. But you just made a massive hire in May of 2019. <laughs> you just made this, right? May, yeah. of, May of 19. And you brought up Gerson's twins and talked about family and Ryan Saunders <laughs> and the son. <laughs> and everybody's gone. Don't everybody's gone. Don't and you're me telling me I can't ask you about it. You have so screwed this franchise up. And you're telling me I can't ask you. And then and then good for him, I believe. Jace Frederick of the Pioneer Press did say, does this come back on you? And he rambled through. I mean, he should really. I would, I would love. I would quit my job here right now and take a one-day job with Glenn to say, Glenn, here's what we're going to, to do. I would call another press conference and I would provide him with notes that say, I have been a terrible owner. I have screwed this up beyond belief. I'd like to apologize to the state. In, in the mid-90s, I did something real good. And since then, I have screwed the pooch. And I would like to apologize. And I would like to tell you all that I have been an embarrassment. And that after today, you will never see my face again in this town in a public capacity. Dude. That's what I would do. And then I would take my check that Glenn would cut me for $1 million because it's the best career advice he's ever gotten and find a new job. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you singled out Jace Frederick, who covers the Timberwolves for the Pioneer Press. And, and that was like, like that line of questioning is like, that's not off limits. The, all right, we, so we can't talk about how Gerson was let go because there are certain. And by the way, I talked to some people in the organization over the weekend too. And, and I and I even I was from my standpoint I was like hey I don't know if you want this advice or not but like from a media standpoint and a public perception standpoint you guys should address as much of this as possible on Monday so that it's not lingering and and the response I got back and it's valid is there's actually le- certain legalities like we can't we can't talk a lot about the way that it ended with Gerson right but what they can talk about <laughs> and what yes. and what Jace asked was okay the process by which you found him correct. How is that going to be different this time around, right? How is Mark Lowry right. going to be more involved and, yep. and whatnot? And yes, you know, 
like that. And and, th- and those questions for Glenn. And it's not it's not just Gerson. It's David Kahn. It's Tom Thibodeau. Correct. It's even Kevin McHale to some extent, right? And the way that he like he found Kevin Garnett, but then every other move after that was a disaster. And and this goes back twenty years. 20 years, how are you so bad? And people always ask, well, what about the, what about the links? Doesn't he deserve credit? Okay, when you, when you take 25 years worth of swings at hiring people, of course you're going to hit on some. He found Cheryl Reeve. He deserves mm-hmm. credit for finding Cheryl Reeve. He deserves credit mm-hmm. for finding Flip Saunders. But his batting average when it comes to hiring and finding key people to run the basketball operations department is so bad. And it's I don't know if... I don't want to. I don't want to sit here and like turn this into a, like a media war. But it's like I feel like it's not being made enough of a big deal how bad of an owner this guy is. It doesn't get talked about on the same level as like Cleveland Browns and like they've they've become so irrelevant and so bad and so much of an embarrassment. By the way, I was so I know there was a live version of this press conference and I think they streamed it on Timberwolves.com. I clicked on the Zoom link. You want to know how many national reporters were on that Zoom call? One. Mark Stein. And you know why? No one cares anymore. Like, he has driven this thing so far into right. the ground over the course of the last 17 years. Right. that they, Like, they don't even come up on anyone's radar. It's like, oh, well, the Wolves are, huh, yeah, the wolves are uh, announcing more major changes to their basketball yeah. structure. Shocking, right? So, but it, it's oh ownership God, though. Like, like that's incredible. One person, so one person joined a call. Oh, okay, one person joined a Zoom press conference that that had Lori on it and a Rod. Think about that for a second. That's how embarrassing this entire thing ha- has become, and that's why they, what they should have said was, Glenn, we're, we're going to have you off to the side to do a little scrum, <laughs> but the real press conference that people are going to see is going to be two people, the people who are going to own yeah. this team. But, and, but, and but, but, the, because could, the, but they're not owners yet. It, it doesn't happen for two I, years. And so Glenn, I, like Glenn, it's, I mean, <laughs> but I'm with you. I think there has to be a way. So here's what I think. Here's what I would attempt to do. If, if Lori can do it, I would attempt to make him the president of the franchise tomorrow. Yeah, And I would say, you are the president, so you don't own the team, but you're an investor, and you make the calls. You are the I'm front with you, facing, Phil. you are the public speaker, Yep. you are, you are and even if it's a lot of fluff and PR speak, like, yep. literally anyone speaking on face behalf the of the organization other than Glenn Taylor, yes. Face, he's the face of the franchise, tomorrow. And Glenn Taylor, um, I would say, Glenn, we never want to see you at a podium again. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just it. I did. You know, I, I know it's it, it's it, he he keeps going back to these little talking points, and he does this with all. I've I've watched enough podcasts now with Mark Laurie since they announced the sure. uh, the ownership thing over the last three months. He says a lot about all of his businesses: vision, capital, people. Vision meaning what is our point of existing? You mm-hmm. know, what when we wake up every morning, what is it that we do here? You know, <laughs> what is what is our ultimate goal? <laughs> Um, capital meaning money and finances, and then people. And he said people is the hardest part of the equation. Now, some of us might think, well, I mean, getting like a billion dollars to play around with might be the hardest part, but like you can't get to those levels of success financially if you don't have the right people in place for running businesses, et cetera. Absolutely. You know, people is the hardest part. And he said it's going to take us several months to find the people that we need in certain areas. I will say one of the things that stood out, though, is according to Glenn Taylor, Sachin Gupta is not the interim head of basketball operations. They are just putting him in charge of basketball operations and sink or swim. And if it's if it starts to look like he's floundering, yeah, then they'll not, go on a search for a new basketball uh, head. I'm not I'm not I'm not buying that. But but well, no, but like I'm saying there's not there's not really anything to debate. Like they're not looking for a new president of basketball operations. Right. I right think now. I would arg- I would think that they are. Right now, I, yeah, I think behind the scenes that they, they will start. Uh, well, they Glenn, are Glenn's not. <laughs> um, Glenn doesn't have any connections. No, Glenn. He needs here's to search the sk- for him to find Tom Thibodeau. I so I'm am really, willing. I'm really a man. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that the new people who are investors in th- this team are going to be quietly looking. That's my guess. Sure. Like I, I don't buy that thing was such a cluster bleep and was so poorly done. 
I'm not buying anything like that to, to be like, oh, it's it's Gupta for sure. Uh, they screwed this up so badly and are so embarrassed that I think what they're trying to say, what Glenn is, I, not the new guys, what Glenn is trying to, to say is, oh, no, no, we've got the guy now. It, it's typical Glenn. I thought the only thing that, like, I thought the only parts that were embarrassing were Glenn. That's I what I'm saying. I didn't think but that I the was, Lori and Arod parts. But were Lori embarrassing. looked. But but Lori, who again I'll come back to, I think is really smart. Alex is. He's just him. I have no idea. Alex uh, preaching he, uh, quote honesty and transparency was the favorite. Alex part. is. Listen, is, it's really important to honesty and transparency is one of my key sh- pillars in life. And shower heads. Arod. <laughs> a, a shower heads. Arod is naturally uncomfortable. Be, because he, he's stiff, but he tries n- not to be. But if you watched when, when they pulled the camera out and gave a wide view, Mark Laurie looked like he wanted to uh, get off that stage as quickly as possible. Not because he, he was doing poorly himself, but because I think he was so embarrassed by Glenn. Yes, because so he knows that Glenn Taylor is just this bumpkin that they came in. They, mm-hmm. they knew that 100%. they could convince him to do whatever they wanted. And I'm fine with it, by the way. But he also knows, as much as he's close with Alex Rodriguez, he he knows the public perception of Alex. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I don't know. I mean, I think I think he probably feels it more in certain markets, and this would be one of them. We don't like we don't like the coastal elites that lie and cheat coming in and beating our twins and you know cheating their way with steroids. So there's probably a palpable tension when Alex comes into some rooms, and Mark probably feels some of that too. You know, yeah. Marnie, Marnie even made the joke, which was, I love Marnie, but it was like, it was kind of uncomfortable when she goes, you're a you know World Series champion and had this Hall of Fame career with the Yankees, and we, we don't remember any of those games here. And she kind of like mentions the fact that he hit a bunch of bombs against the Twins in the playoffs. It's like, it's like, it's like this weird, uncomfortable thing of all of these Twins fans have hated the Yankees, and A-Rod was the figurehead of that hate for so long. And now he's sitting in the room trying to convince you that you know, if we put some new shower heads and get some better personal chefs in the Wolves locker room, then championships are on the horizon. I know that's not what he meant, and I right. agree with his general point that right. if you can, if you can, if you can be top notch in these fifteen areas, it'll help the team right. become better. I agree with what he was saying, but his presence makes people uncomfortable. It right, and he's and he's uncomfortable naturally. He tries to to uh, crack wise and, and like laughs, and the rest of the room doesn't laugh. But there is nothing that Glenn said. In that press conference, that that Lori took seriously, so like he can say all he wants about Sachin Gupta is the guy for now. There's going to be a search, and and they yeah. should like like there's no reason to take the guy who was behind Gerson and be like it's your job now. I mean, if Gerson was as crappy as we're told, everything below him has to be questioned and should be. But I don't think there's any. Thing that Glenn said that anyone else on that stage was like that is gospel. Th- this that was an attempt to be like oh, Glenn still owns the team, I guess, but he's going to be seen fair or not as the bumbling fool by the people who are really going to run this club. Yeah, uh, Lori did bring up toward the end wanting a new arena with the latest mm-hmm. technology. Right, he talked about augmented reality and other technologies. And and he said building a new arena from scratch, and that's something that I think we've all sort of speculated on. They pumped about 150 million dollars or something, um, a chunk or most of it. A chunk of it was public money. Yeah, it was left over the from the side. Viking Stadium bill, right? Yes, something like yeah. Um, but that's the first time. Just I don't I don't think we should gloss over the fact that no the, the new and future owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Unless he plans on funding it himself, uh, said we're going to want a new arena from scratch, and it's going to be expensive. So that's definitely going to be a thing at some point. Can I connect the dots here and t- tell you why that entire exchange with started, with, which started with a question about the team moving potentially, should be concerning? <sighs> Detective Judd, I'm going to tell you this right now. Did you notice who answered the question about the team? Staying here. Pierre from Channel 9 asked the question about the team staying here and that there's concern that they might move it and why shouldn't fans be concerned and can you offer assurances? The person who answered that question, Alex Rodriguez. Mm. 
Mark Laurie didn't touch it, didn't get near it. This arena question was answered by Mark. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Glenn, Glenn has, Glenn's a buffoon, but he's probably not the most dishonest person on that stage. Alex is. Anything Alex says, and Mark Laurie, again, I'm going to say this. He might be devious. I don't know him, but he's very smart. He didn't go near that question for a reason. He doesn't want to have that quote come back to him. And so he's the one who then said, and he's right. And by the way, I am I am with the people that say this team wasted or this or the city and the team wasted its money by remodeling Target Center, which was a huge mistake. And they do need a new building. But it was interesting that Lori then came back and answered that question. Yeah. And they do. Like to keep up with the rest 100%. of the NBA, look at some of the other arenas that are popping up. They definitely need a new arena. Um, there are other markets, Seattle, Las Vegas, that would love an NBA team. So there, there are leverage points. I think in the end, the NBA wouldn't want to lose a top 15 media market from its collection of teams, but they could use some of these other markets as leverage to say, hey, if you guys don't pump in, you know, whatever, $400 million in public funding for the stadium or for, for a new arena, then, exactly. well, I mean, Las Vegas would love to, or Seattle would, would love to. Um, in the end, why would the public want to put a dime into a new arena if this franchise can't compete at a high level, right? The, the Vikings were trying for a long time. The Twins were trying for a long time. The Twins were trying in the 90s, right, when it was they were coming off 90 lost seasons, and then finally they start winning division titles, and they start, uh, you know, Joe Maurer wins an MVP. That was, that was after the, uh, the ground was already broke, but... It makes it easier to sell it to the public if, hey, this is a pretty darn good team, right? Mm -hmm. You know, th like the Vikings coming You're off right. the Brett Favre season, and I, I think that deal got agreed to like during the Brett Favre era, right? Didn't 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 shovels go in the ground in like 2012 or 13 for the Vikings stadium? It was but after it, it was after Favre, but not too much. Okay, but there was like a general excitement still about the and Vikings, it, and it's and, the Vikings. It's the yeah. Vikings. You yeah. can't lose them. It's impossible to ask the public for even yes. a dime. 17 years, one playoff appearance. Like, you got to start winning games before you can even broach yeah. that conversation. And and here's the problem, too. Glenn, the plan for Glenn's continuing involvement. I wouldn't give that franchise a cent until Glenn is not in control. Like, why would you? Right? Like, the whole thing's just a, a boondoggle. Yeah. So why would you be like, you know what? Mark, you don't own the team completely yet, but we're going to... No, I wouldn't. Uh, but it also shows the incompetence of the entire operation that they essentially allowed the concourses of Target Center, an arena built at, at a time where e every other building from that era is gone, that they allowed that thing. I mean, they. it is the definition of putting lipstick on a pig. The definition. There are more seats upstairs than down. It's beyond flawed. It's hopeless. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know what we need? We need a, a, a taco bar. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put in a new taco bar and, there, and a new – I don't a, know. Like but I'm just saying that. it's the concourse. They do, have, they do have some – I think they have a couple levels of nachos, I will say. They, they do, but, I mean, that Got was that seen as the answer. Don't ask about Gerson. We're not talking about Simmons, but enjoy, but enjoy our selection of nachos. Think about that. What was, uh, by the way, this uh, this recap of the so Timberwolves ownership press conference or this Glenn Taylor event session is brought to you by PXG Minneapolis. All right, PXG is here for your fall golfing needs. They've got amazing clubs, apparel. Everything you would need for the next couple months until snow shuts down the golf season in the Twin Cities. It's a golfer's paradise inside PXG Minneapolis in Southdale Center. And find out more at pxg.com slash Minneapolis. Um, what was your... Okay, well, I, think, I think we got a lot of that off our chest on, in addition to the, the venting we did last week. What is... Is there any sort of like silver lining or ray of light or hope takeaway that you have from that ownership press conference that just lasted 30 minutes? The only thing I can say is I, I have been impressed so far with what I've read about 
Lori in particular, and I do think he's a sharp guy. And I almost like the fact that I sensed from that press conference that, that he was as embarrassed as I was. Like, he didn't seem to be... There are some yeah. folks who, who would have been up there and tried to be slick about it and, and been like, oh, Glenn, and laughed at what Glenn said or patted him on the back, right? Like, there are some folks who I really don't trust who try to be slick, and you're just like, okay, dude, you're just slick. That's it. Um, I like the fact that he seemed like a guy who who would have loved to put down the mic and walked off the stage because he was as aware as we were that yep. that was a disaster. Yep. Again, this could very easily wind up on a future episode of Old Tweets Exposed where Declan finds this video clip here. Uh, could also wind up on like the old, the freezing cold takes account on, on Twitter. Like but I like Mark Laurie so far. I'm not going to sit here and say that uh, there's a 100% chance that he becomes this amazing NBA owner, but I like his track record. I like the fact that he has more of a shark-type personality, and I like the fact that he talks very specifically about mission, vision, people. Like those, A lot of that's window dressing until you actually mm -hmm. implement like hiring the right people and, and implementing the right vision. Glenn Taylor doesn't talk about any of that stuff. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't think about that stuff. He doesn't like. You don't if, imagine like screwing up that often over the course of twenty or twenty-five years and never thinking to yourself, you know what? I should like. I should really hone in on what my vision is and, and what my strategy is for hiring the right people. You know, he licks his finger, puts it up in the wind, and he talked today. I've got eighty different businesses, and I run them all the same way. I put great people in charge. Well, <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> if the other 79 businesses are run uh -oh. in the same way as the Timberwolves, then there's no way you're still worth multiple billions of dollars because all of those businesses would be run into the ground. So I guess my main takeaway is I like Mark Laurie so far. Um, I'm curious to see what his influence can lead to in this organization. Yep. I just want the Timberwolves to be relevant. I just want them to win basketball games. And I'm excited for the season to start because it sounds like, and, and I can tell you this too from just doing some sleuthing this weekend, the players really didn't have any meaningful, deep connection with Gerson Rosas. You know, some, I mean, some got along with him, you know, some didn't love him. But it's not a big deal. But it's not, yeah, it's not, it, it shouldn't affect the actual basketball one way or the other. So that's the good news. To me, this comes down to one thing it's worth Lori and A Rod taking this franchise to Florida or Seattle. Because if they move this team, they are still, and this is an incredible thing to say, they are better owners than Glenn Taylor no matter what they do. That's the scary thing. Well, what if there was, let's say I said, all right, there's a 75% chance they move the team within seven years. Mm -hmm. You can either take that and have the 25% chance that they don't, but mm -hmm. you get new ownership. Or there's a 100% chance that the Timberwolves are just the Timberwolves under Glenn Taylor for the next seven years. It's not hard for me. I'll take the yeah. risk. I'll take, I'll the, take the, risk. the risk. And the 25% of them not moving the team falls on one thing. How much will we contribute to build a new arena? That's yeah. what it comes down to. And I would rather risk that. There is no way that I have any interest in watching another seven years of this garbage. I mean, this is this is the NBA it is the second most popular sports league in North America. It is a massive business that that traffics in a lot of things that are really, really cool. And it feels like we have a G League team. Like, not the players, but the franchise feels like a G League team. I just have no interest. I would rather this franchise go somewhere else and potentially thrive than continue to watch this utter crap and gong show and plus guess what too it's embarrassing like glenn taylor glenn taylor uh clips from today are going to be played probably a little bit on national shows right no they won't well if they no, are my po if, if they were my point is that's the view that people have you've got you know you've got genie bus and her old man is dead now, but Jerry was great, right? Uh, you've got a lot of people around this league who are really good, who are, you know, Mark Cuban. 
And then you got this guy. Um, it's just embarrassing. Dex, I got one more thing, but Dex, what, what was your? Is there a silver lining for you here? The, the silver lining is eventually Glenn Taylor goes away. Like that is my silver lining, and I want it to be expedited. I know it's a two-year plan. Um, I think Mark Lore is a pretty smart dude. I think A Rod is still, in my opinion, a bit of snakish, and he's awkward, and he's weird. And like, I don't care that you didn't have a prom date before your big league debut uh, in Boston. It was just wow. like a weird joke. Um, the sooner they can get rid and get out of the Glenn Taylor era, the better. Because I, I can't stand, and this is someone who isn't a diehard Wolves fan, I can't stand Minnesota sports fans that just say, oh, just classic Wolves. Why even root for this team? When like, in reality, over the last 18 years, the baseball team hasn't done anything. The Vikings have been to a couple NFC Championship games. That's cool. The Wild have been first round busts. Like, is, is the bar really, I know the incompetence with the Timberwolves is low, but are the other major sports teams that you're gravitating towards really fulfilling those needs that you want? Like, I want the Wolves to be relevant. I want the Wolves to be able to get out of this dumpster fire and be an awesome franchise This team that this state rallies around. Because when basketball is good in this town, it's damn good. So the sooner we can get out of Glenn Taylor and Mark Lauren A-Rod take over, the better. That's kind of my takeaway. Did anyone ask about Kevin Garnett today? I don't, no. I don't recall any questions no, about Kevin not. Garnett. Ooh. Let's some write that down so that will come off the board then. I believe a bunch and of them. Okay, yeah, we a, had bunch a bunch of them. them. Yeah, they did not. I get that it wasn't because Gerson just got let go. It wasn't like the urgent thing, but that's a that's a really important question that needs to be asked of Alex I Rodriguez think, and Mark Lorry. In a yeah, I think they're form. doing. I think they were going to after the the main press conference got done do uh, um, small scrums off to the side. So I'm sure at that point in time it's going to come up. Yeah, yeah, I, I would be really curious. I mean, I I don't know if Alex and Kevin Garnett have any meaningful relationship, but they definitely. Like the peak of their careers was at the same time, right? I think they're right around the same age, so you would think that those guys would have a conversation at some point. And I'm not saying KG needs to come. KG doesn't have the money to like buy in for a significant chunk of ownership, but is there some right. way to get him back in the good graces? And my guess is it won't happen for at least two years because until Glenn Taylor's gone from the organization, that's what I'm saying. It sounds like KG is out. So, oh. anyways, hmm. all right, Mark Lord, team the- president. That's not that hard. Make it happen. All right, that's the that's the recap, the Mackie and Judd emergency podcast recap of the Mark Laurie, Alex Rodriguez, Glenn Taylor. Pro- Don't ask me. Don't ask me about this. Don't ask me. Don't, Don't ask, ask me. me about that. Can't we? Yeah. Uh, we won't be answering those questions. Yeah, the economy is terrible. It's a terrible economy. We, uh, the, the, the franchise might hit rock bottom if we sell this team too early. Thanks, Glenn. All right. See you guys. Mackie and Judd.